February 17th, 2003, it was a Monday. I woke up, there was a whole lot of snow outside from a, a, a recent blizzard we had just had. And I walked downstairs and um, I saw my father shoveling the snow. So I got, I got my clothes on, helped him shovel the snow. And in the middle of doing that, I remember my mother came out and she looked up and she said, there's so much snow. We're gonna remember this for a long time. I spent the rest of the day in my room playing violent video games and watching the Matrix movie with my black trench coat on and my gun in my hand. Uh, as evening time continued, uh, paranoia sunk in even further. Lightning struck my brain. And this is what hit me. I said to myself, the only way I could find out for sure the only way I could find out for sure if the Matrix was real and I wasn't losing my mind was to simply pick up the phone and call them. I left my room and I walked precariously over to the house phone in my parents' bedroom. slowly pick the phone up off the hook and then taking a deep nervous breath I spoke those powerful words his words the final words of Neo I know you're out there I can feel you now I know that I you're know afraid. That you're afraid you're afraid, afraid of me you're afraid of change, afraid of change. I don't I know the future I didn't, I didn't come, come here to here tell you how this is going to end I came yeah. here to tell you how it's going to begin. I'm going to hang up this phone, and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. A world without you. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries. A world, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. And I hung up the phone, and I walked calmly back to the TV in my room and began watching The Matrix all over again. And I remember sitting there um, on my bed looking up at The Matrix poster, just saying basically, fuck my life, you know? I got my shotgun out and I, um, I put some slugs in there in the chamber. And um, I slid the action forward and I left my room. But before I did, I, I put, uh, a CD player on, on, on my head, on headphones on my head. And this one was a little different than The Matrix. This one was by a band called Drowning Pool. The words to the song were beaten, why four? Can't take much more. Something's got to give. Let the body hit the floor. 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 That's what I was listening to as I left my room. And I, I went downstairs to get to the basement. when I, I got to the bottom of the basement stairs, I saw my mother was sitting there at the computer with a smile on her face. And she turned, she swiveled in her chair to face me. And when she saw the gun in my hands, which she'd seen for the first time ever, her smile disappeared and I shot her. I shot her in the chest. And I turned my attention to my father who was on the other side of the basement and he dove, he was at his computer too, and he dove under the table, and he was looking at me with a look I'd never seen on him before, and just that look of shock and disbelief, and I remember I crouched down to be level with him, and I shot him about three times. I went 
upstairs to reload. And when I came back down, um, I still had my, my headphones on. The words that were forcing through my ears were skin against skin, blood and bone. You're all by yourself, but you're not alone. You wanted in, now you're here. Driven by hate, consumed by fear that the body sit before. That's what I was listening to as I went down for the second time to the basement. I was standing at the top of the basement staircase and my mother was standing at the bottom of the staircase holding her chest as she bled out. And I lifted the gun up and I, I aimed it at her face. And she looked out at me and she said, she said, Joshua, she said, what did you do? And she looked and she kept looking at me for a minute and, I, and she said, she said, you wouldn't. And I pulled the trigger. Um, when I pulled the trigger and her face exploded, you know, half of her face, her eye and her face exploded out through the back of her head. And her flesh was just turned into like riblets, a bloody mess, and it, it messed me up really bad because it wasn't anything like I had seen on The Matrix, you know. Um, real life was so much more horrific, and it, it kind of jarred me. I was still pretty numb, but it, I remember it jarring me because it was different than, than what I thought of The Matrix. So I turned around and I went upstairs to get to the dining room. I picked up the phone in the kitchen and my sister was on the phone. I didn't realize at the time that my sister was on the phone with my father at the exact moment that I killed him and my mother. And she heard the whole thing and I didn't realize it. So here I am, I got the phone in the kitchen and I'm, I'm, I said, hello? And, and my sister said, Josh? And I said, Tiffany? I said, what are you doing there? And she said, Josh, where's daddy? I want to talk to daddy. You know, I said, I told her, I said, hang up the phone, Tiffany. I got to call someone. And she didn't hang up, so I let the phone hang, and I went to, uh, my father had a cell phone. I went to a cell phone. I went outside. Um, I, I, I took a Coca-Cola out of the refrigerator, and I started drink. I popped the top, and I started drinking it, and I called 911. When I hung the phone up, uh, I got, a, I got a call on my dad's phone from a friend of his, and my, my dad's friend said, hey, Josh, is your dad there? And I said, he can't come to the phone right now. And he said, oh, okay, will you give, me a, give him a message for me? Just tell him I called. I said, will you give him that message for me? And I said, sure. And he hung up the phone, I hung up the phone, and uh, moments later, uh, the police arrived at the driveway of my house with their guns drawn, about five or six of them with their, drun with their guns drawn on me, and uh, told me to get down on my knees, and of course, 